We call it TAD. Um, it's for technology and design. So they go, come with me um, every 12 weeks. And my job is to train them um, and give them a flavor. And it's pretty much about rockets. Um, but then using the concept of rocket to bring in stuff like making PowerPoints and the whole thing is all about measurement. It's a trick, trick them into actually learning how to measure. Every time they make something, I make them re-measure, recalibrate, and then do it on Tinkercad. So it forces them to actually use. And they would say, oh, do you want me to do it in centimeter? You want me to do it in, you know. We are working on building uh, rockets out of two liter bottles. And our objective was to fly over 50 feet. And we are, we are exposed to different tools. Do you feel like this class helps you in other classes at all? Oh yeah, because when we do a lot of measuring in other classes like math, it helps us. Because right now we're working on centimeters and stuff and altitude. And, and it also helps us in science, like how much we talked about By the, the mass, air, yeah. By volume. Yeah. They had to build a rocket in two weeks and it has to go 50 feet. So we did the test flight on Wednesday already. And those that didn't make it were supposed to redesign yesterday. And those that would finish, they did their artist statements. Uh, what craft did you use, et cetera, et cetera. So you're basically building a portfolio. Remember the eighth grader? Yeah. Okay, this is your first portfolio, okay? And if you do this right, you save it. Three years from now, you sit there doing that interview, and they ask it, what did you do in the sixth grade? You go, here it is, I did this, I built a rocket. I work with uh, a co-worker, um, her name is Lindsay Shepard, and she, what she does is that she is our coach here um, for art integrations. And so when I first started the class, besides doing testing, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to get these guys tests, so how would I assess them, see what they've learned? So Lindsay and I collaborated. And so for the first two years, I used a lot of the student have their minds of trying to find collaborative inflection. And then, you know, ABD comes about, now I get to use my own sets of tool. But I still use that, you know, when I end, at the end of the projects where the learners are taking what they have and they, they have to specify, you know, what, which student happens they use in crafting their, their material. So instead of calling artist mind, we call it designer statements. And then from that, we hopefully built out an entire portfolio for them. I would say of the 32 kids, probably eight or nine have been with me, the eighth graders have been with me for three years, so they took it since they were sixth graders. I just got, I just love the gist of, you know, building stuff and um, the think, make and improve process where you have to brainstorm and build and think and, you know, redesign. Uh, and I, it was just satisfying just look, looking at what I built. And I've been here for three years, so I've helped Mr. Wynn. We've done a lot of projects such as bridges, roller coasters, airplanes, a lot of airplanes. Usually when you buy a shelf, you usually get at the store and you like, never really make it. So this time we actually cut it and like did all the measurements and like all this stuff. And it's actually going to come to you soon. What do you guys want to make next? I don't want to drill Now you've learned how to make a shelf. What could be next? Another shelf? A wardrobe. I came with this concept where there's a board and on the board it sets the agenda for the day and then what I do is they have a form that they actually look at it and the form is ask you for the days and the dates and they ask you what's, what's today's agenda and what's your goal and so it immediately gets them to read the agenda and say, okay, we're going to build shelf today. So my goal, uh, design the shelf, or my goal, build the shelf. And the next question is, after they do the day, say, what did you learn? Or what did you wonder about what you did today? And then how did the day go? Which student have managed you use? And then it's for four days, they actually fill that out each day as they walk in. And at the end, it's a big reflection about, well, for week one to five, how was your week go? You know, why did you give it that rate? What could you do better? What do you look forward to? You know, what do you want to um, always improve? And you know, sometimes they write nothing. And I say, well, you know, there's no such thing as nothing. You know, for example, your handwriting, I can't read it. Improve your handwriting. Or, you know, if you can't improve something, what can I improve? Okay, or your neighbor improve. So always looking for that motion to move forward. Perfection never happens.
Gage and persist is one of our um, studio habits of mine, and you just have to persist on what you're doing. You're always gonna fail, and that's just the path to success. Failure is not bad. You have to, you know, uh, learn from your mistakes and not avoid 